let's talk a little bit about data flow in Fabric. Let's say I have data somewhere that I don't want to upload the CSV files or whatever, JSON files or whatever manually. Maybe I'd like to schedule it maybe every midnight or every Friday at midnight or whatever. I would like to bring this data in. So data flows Gen 2 in Fabric are excellent for that. So let me go back to my workspace that I created earlier, the third track, and I'm going to say new. And notice the second one here is data flow Gen 2. Let's click on that. And once I get to uh, my Gen 2 that is being created for me right now, it is pretty much essentially, if you're familiar with Power BI, that is Power Query. So notice Power Query here at the top. And I can click on Get Data to tell the system where I would I'd like to get the data from. I'm going to click on More here at the bottom. And I'd like to show you the amazing amount of uh, data sources that you can get this from. So even click on the View More here on the right side. And you will see tons and tons of different places that you can get data from. I would like you to spend some time reading, like if you want to get it from Snowflake, from uh, the Power Platform for Dataverse, Data Marts, uh, Oracle, Teradata, uh, Amazon Redshift, all of these things are available in here. If you'd like to focus on the file-based ones, yes, Excel, CSV files, XML, JSON, no problem. If you're looking for databases, all the major ones, including Google, BigQuery, and everything else will be available in here as well. Sometimes you are still in Fabric. You'd like just to get it from a different um, lake house or a different workspace altogether that you actually created somewhere or from a real warehouse-based uh, database in Fabric itself or Custo using KQL databases for real-time analytics and so on. In my case in here, I'm going to look for something called OData. And notice there is a lot of things that has to do with OData, but one of them that I'm interested in, if you're familiar with the old database we used to use in the old days, like Northwind and AdventureWorks and all of these, these are available now through a REST API for OData. So if I click on OData in here, it's just requesting my URL to go get the data as a service. It's an SVC file right there. So actually, the OData service itself has it available on HTTPS services.odata.org version 4, Northwind, and the service itself is called northwind.svc. This is available for everybody for demos and so on. I'm going to say next in here, and we're going to get to it anonymous. This actually service does not require authentication. And there is all the databases, or all the tables in the database of Northwind that you're familiar with probably from the past are right there. I'm not going to bring them all. I just want to try it out. Maybe we'll take orders and orders details. How about that? That's good enough for me for testing. For this one, I'm going to say create. Once I create that in power uh, query in here, uh, they will be available for me on the uh, on the left side. I can make modification. Usually, uh, the Delta Parquet files don't like these type of uh, of uh, columns, so I'm going to go ahead and remove them. There is very very pe peculiar actually about the different types that it will accept, so I'm going to actually remove these two from here. I uh, will take a look if there is anything else that uh, Delta Parquet files will not like. It looks like everything looks good. I'm going to click on orders. And let's take a look in here, all the way at the end, probably it's not going to be happy with those. Let's go ahead and remove customer, employee, orders, hill, and shipper. I'm going to delete these four. And let's see if there is something else in here that we know that uh, Parquet files or Delta Parquet files are not happy. These ones are suspicious, the order date, required date, and ship date. I'm going to leave them because I wanted to show you the error that they will cause in the Delta Parquet. So, uh, once I know where this is going, notice at the bottom and here uh, says data destination, no data destination has been specified. So I'm going to click on add data destination. And now I can send all the stuff after I cleaned it up, maybe uh, change the type of uh, the column, removed some of the columns, did whatever transformation in Power Query that I can do. I can send it all to an Azure SQL database. If I have the connection string for that, I can do this. I can send it to a data explorer for Custo. I can put it in a SQL Server database as a warehouse somewhere, or I can use a lake house, which in my case, I already have one called the Stir Trek Lake House. So let's go ahead and click on that. And there it is, Lake House. And the uh, authentication is going to be anonymous for this one. We'll say next. And immediately it will show me the Lake Houses in my workspaces. And uh, there is my uh, Stir Trek workspace. Let me open it up. 
and um, hopefully you can find a Sturtec Lake House. This is the one I would like to put this on. And remember, I already have from a previous video, we have a products table already created in there. I'm going to leave it alone. What I'm interested in is to create a new one, give it whatever name you want. I'm going to leave the same name orders like in Power Query, and I'm going to say next. And now the last step is telling you um, the, how is it going to map all the fields. And notice here that it did not like the order date, the required date, and the ship date. If you put the cursor over this, it will tell you this column cannot be included because it's not supported in the Delta Parquet format inside of Fabric. So you'll need to do something about this, otherwise these will not come through at all. So I'm going to cancel this for a second. And the way to do this easily, you will click on the order date, for instance, and we will go to transform. And instead of date time zone, I'm going to change this to make it date time. That is an acceptable type for Delta um, Parquet files. I'm going to do the same thing with the required date. Let me go ahead and click on both of them so I don't have to do it multiple times. And we'll say date time. It will change it on both of them and I should be in good shape. Notice I don't have a save button, so I don't have to save. As a matter of fact, as soon as I do this, the system uh, will automatically take care of it right away. So even if by mistake you close down the browser or something like that, you will not lose your work. It will still be available in your workspace when you get back anyway. Alrighty, let's uh, go ahead, go back to home in here and set the destination one more time. We'll say the lake house. We'll say next. And we will do what we did before. We'll go ahead and go to the workspace for Star Trek and we'll click on the lake house itself and we'll say next. And this time I should not be seeing any problems. See, there is no errors. It is the correct format that Delta Parquet fans will expect. And I'm going to say save the, setting, uh, the settings and uh, hopefully we will have everything working well in a second. All right, excellent. If I leave at this point, go back to my workspace, nothing would have actually happened because I didn't publish. So at that some point, you need to click on the publish or schedule it for publishing for a later time if you want to. But right now, I'm going to click on publish so we can see it working. We'll say publish. And that will end up taking a few seconds. The first one in here, notice there is a something that will show up. Yep, there it is. You see, if I put my cursor over it, it says publish in progress. Usually it takes about 30 to 40 seconds. But even when it's done, that doesn't mean that you have a Delta Parquet file ready. The only time you're going to get the orders Delta Parquet file in the lake house is when the refreshing takes place. So first, the, the, uh, the publishing has to take place. And as soon as it's done, then the refreshing will take place. And that usually takes about 45 to 50 seconds. And then we will end up in the data, in the data lake house in here. We will have an orders uh, table. See, it finished. And now it's doing the refreshing. This is the one that's actually creating the Delta Parquet um, tables inside of your lake house. Okay, so it did take about a minute or so. One of the things before I leave here, I don't like to leave it as a data flow one. So let me go ahead and rename this guy. We'll say edit. You can also, you don't have to go back to Power Query. You can change it right there from the properties as well. Uh, or you can go all the way to the top in here and we'll uh, change the name. We'll call it, for instance, um, orders. Oops. Click here. There you go. We'll say orders data flow. That's a good name. You can hopefully give it even a better name if you want. And now when we go uh, back to publish in here, uh, we didn't have to do that. Remember, if I clicked on this and I said properties, for instance, on the side here, I would have changed the name here as well. So you can do it either way. If you remember to change the name while you're in Power Query, great. If not, you don't have to go back there. You can change it from the properties here as well. Okay, so how do I know that everything worked well? Click on the lake house itself. And we will go on the left side. And in here, hopefully it will refresh. Let me give it a second. We'll do Shift F5 in here just to make sure any glitches in the UI will go away. All right, waiting for it to load in. There you go. So it used to say unidentified or, uh, or something like that. Just to remember, sometimes Shift F5 will clean up the, these issues. There is my Delta Parquet table for orders available right here for me. I can actually change from Lake House to my SQL Analytics endpoint and start querying against this, uh, this table directly. But now I have a data flow that I can actually refresh anytime I want to directly from the Northwind service on the OData. 
And I can actually later on, we'll see in another video how to create a pipeline in Fabric using Data Factory so that we can schedule this in a way to bring it in uh, with other things at the same time. So hopefully this was useful to show you how the, the Data Flow Gen 2 works in Fabric. And I'll see you soon in another video. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.